John showed the numbers. This is a country divided on this. Uh, 45% support impeachment and removal. 47% are opposed. But if you do look at by party, Allison, you're right. You see a decline from our last poll in Democratic support uh, from 90% down to 77%. Believe that poll for one second. What part do you The 90 to 77%. I, I, you know, it, it, it's just I don't believe it. Like, it makes no sense that that number would change like that. A quick warning, if you have high blood pressure, you should probably skip this one. As it becomes clear that the Republicans have no intention of convicting Trump in the Senate, the Democrats and their media seem to be cracking up and are increasingly extreme in their anti-Trump lamentations. Yes, Barack Obama and Joe Biden withheld congressionally approved aid from Ukraine. Unless they fired the prosecutor that was investigating the corrupt company that Joe Biden's son was inexplicably a board member of. Yes, Hillary Clinton and the DNC paid a foreign agent for dirt on Trump that was compiled from Russian intelligence and was very likely Russian disinformation. Do any of these things threaten our democracy? Apparently not, as every single example I just listed here is being ignored as a conspiracy theory. It wasn't that long ago that the media joined Hillary Clinton in saying that if Trump hypothetically challenged those election results, that it would be an attack on democracy. Trump has repeatedly suggested that the election process is rigged. Yet Donald Trump keeps raising it over and over and the effects could be devastating to this country. Yeah, but the notion that the basic act of democracy, of casting a vote, is no longer fair and that our elections in some ways are no, no, no longer free, which is the suggestion we've been hearing from Donald Trump on the campaign trail as of late. I mean, the, the long-term and even medium-term effect on our democracy could be profound. Yet what have they done since day one? I'm losing track of what is and isn't an attack on democracy. A president who clearly used a foreign, wanted to use a foreign government for his own personal benefit to impede our very democracy. Right. Don't you just love how investigating corrupt Democrats is somehow impeding our democracy? Apparently, if you want to be corrupt, all you really need to do is be a Democrat and run for office. Apparently, at that point, it's an attack on democracy to investigate you. Sorry to interrupt, but Christmas is coming up and I think I have a good gift idea from PatrioticLegacy.com. PatrioticLegacy.com was nice enough to send me over one of their units so that I could give you an honest review. I love this tactical flashlight. It's got everything you would ever need. Six overall lighting functions, escape features like the window hammer and the seatbelt cutter, solar charging so you don't need batteries, a power bank for charging your phone and other devices, and a removable compass with access to a personal safety alarm. <laughs> Patriot Legacy supports veterans and YouTubers like yours truly. So head on over there and make sure to use the promo code DRONE20 to get 20% off your purchase. Thank you. I'm sure it doesn't affect democracy at all to have tens of millions of illegal foreign nationals in the country and driving U.S. policy. I'm sure it doesn't affect democracy at all when Hillary Clinton injects foreign dirt on Trump into the election, which results in illegal spying on his campaign and three years of election result questioning. It doesn't even affect democracy when Democrats do exactly what they claimed was an attack on democracy. There is no consistent standard here. Only purposely partisan kabuki theater and hyperbolic fear mongering. My job is to analyze the politics of it. And I'm telling you, but the I'm politics not talking about this, you. I'm talking about I'm the people. People you my that job are, are here. The senators let me that finish. are I let in you the, talk. Uh, let me in the finish. Senate. The so we have, senators. Here's what's happening you want to now. Hear a we're gonna, we're gonna, on the show keep, ever. girl. Like, please stop talking. I, please stop talking right now. Cause you know what? No what's problem. happening? Thank no, you. No problem. Thank you. I'm no fan of Meghan McCain, but why does she subject herself to this hatred and insanity? They literally treat her like a dog. What you're seeing here is the continued mental breakdown of people who never got over the fact that they lost the election. According to the most recent polls, Trump is leading all of his Democrat rivals. I think it's important to note that the Ukraine theories I was describing, they're not just conspiracy theories. They've been backed up by a Russian disinformation campaign. Well, you know, Try to confuse people about what actually happened in 2016. Confusing people? That's exactly what you do. CNN and the other networks are currently engaged in a campaign to confuse the public about what's actually in the IG report. 
They're all claiming that the report concludes that there was no bias, even though during the hearing, Horowitz clearly said that they did not conclude whether it was gross negligence or intentionality, meaning there was bias. In the CNN article, they repeat the unbelievable claim that these were simply mistakes made by the FBI. Are we really supposed to believe that these supposed cream of the crop people made huge major mistakes like this? Or was it most likely that they just hated Trump? Judging on the text messages that we saw from the head FBI agents who were leading the case, that's the most likely explanation. This is a disinformation campaign. It's deliberate deception. It's fabrication. There are two competing worldview realities. And they are, we do a disservice when we serve those up. That's gaslighting. That's trying to sow deep, deep, deep confusion in the American public about what is actually going on in the world. Everything that guy just said there could easily be said of CNN or the rest of the media. Again, what we're witnessing here is a political propagandist accusing his opposition of what he is currently engaged in. But the nefarious part is that he's doing it as a rationalization to censor his political opposition. And it's not as if these people are too good for conspiracy theories. Going back to the Clinton administration, the media and Hillary Clinton described efforts to impeach him as a vast right-wing conspiracy. During the Bush years, many in the media referred to his administration as the Bush regime, implying that his administration was somehow illegitimate. After 9-11, 60% of Democrats believed that he was either behind the attack or knew about it and let it happen. Oh no, nothing conspiratorial about that at all. Since the election of Donald Trump, CNN and the other networks have seriously advanced the conspiracy theory that Trump is a Russian agent. Hell, I can't get through a day without being accused of being a Russian agent or bot. All of this appears to be getting nuttier by the day. And that's because it is. While approval for impeachment is slipping by the day, support for Trump is going up. Let me ask you this. What percentage in the questions you've heard so many South Carolinians, Granite Staters, and Iowans Thank you. ask about impeachment? It comes up very little. I've heard a grand total of two questions, and I've asked three months. I can think of one town hall where impeachment has come up. The fact is, in this country, we are currently engaged in a cold civil war. Events like this are just battles in that war. Democrats aren't playing by the rules, and in turn, Republicans are fighting back with equal determination. And why shouldn't they? They're going to be harshly judged and demonized by the media no matter what they do. And why play by rules that only one side is held to? Brace yourselves because Democrats and their media know they can't beat Trump. And they're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that Trump doesn't get a second term. The links that they'll go are only limited to what they can rationalize. And as we know, they can rationalize just about anything. That's all I can stand for today. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ooh. If you'd like to support this channel against the efforts from the establishment to censor people like me, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon, Subscribestar, or just sending a donation on PayPal. However you decide to support this channel, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming, and keep coming back.